I'm Tara Bradner, and this is Hopeful Hints, an infertility podcast where you will receive quick, hopeful hints to guide you through infertility. Here, you will find education, inspiration, and most importantly, find peace as you walk through this journey to fulfill your family vision. Are you struggling with understanding what you should eat, what supplements to take, or overwhelmed by what your fertility treatment protocol really means, or simply just need somebody to walk beside you while you're going through infertility, I'd like to introduce you to the Competent Fertility Academy. It is the only program out there of its kind created by a doctorate nurse practitioner. Whether you're just starting your trying to conceive journey or have failed many rounds, the Confident Fertility Academy will help you find clarity with my proven process. You will go from being overwhelmed to confident and in full control moving forward with your fertility care. Inside the Academy is a step-by-step approach to learning everything you need to know to move forward confidently when building your family. You will receive access to life time monthly coaching with me and access a educational course all of this comes with access for life head over to today's show notes to learn more about the confident fertility academy welcome to this week's episode of hopeful hints i'm your host dr tara bradner and today i'm going to be sharing with you about a medication called depolubron I'm also going to be talking about a special biopsy test that I had done. And today's episode is especially important to listen to if you have the diagnosis of unexplained infertility, have failed IVF cycles, reoccur pregnancy loss, and in the case where you may not have that many embryos banked. I'm talking about this topic today because it deals with my own personal protocol when I went through IVF. In addition, there's more studies being done in clinics across the country where they are comparing the use of Depolupron and another medication for patients like I listed. I do feel that Depolupron was part of my magical outcome. I did have a uterine biopsy that was done and we're going to discuss more about this in a little bit. But that eventually led us to the path and the protocol that I was on. So essentially, I was told at my second clinic when we switched to do our IVF that I had endometriosis. And what I was told Depolupron would do was, quote, shut down my endo. And in turn, it would regrow protein that was missing and needed for the embryo to stick. I was informed that this protein can fluctuate naturally month to month based on cycles. So let's begin. What is Depolupron? Now, first of all, this is different than Lupron, which many of you have probably had in your protocol. Depolupron is a GnRH agonist medication. So what is that? It's a gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist. When it is used in females, the medication taken can cause ovaries to stop making estrogen and progesterone. It's commonly used to treat prostate cancer in males and causes the testicles to stop making testosterone. That was a weird mental thing for me to get over because I'd given this medication as a nurse to those men and prescribed it for males several times. So I really had to work through that mentally. And in fact, I never gave myself the shot. I always had my fellow nurses give me that injection. But the side effects that it can cause Um, essentially put you in menopause. And that was the case for me. I had hot flashes, dry skin. I had some hair loss. The big one for me was mood changes. And looking back, had I known that could have occurred, I would have asked to be placed on a medication for anxiety or depression to help offset that. It did go away the moment I got my estrogen patches back, but it was significant for me. Like, I have never experienced that level of depression before mixed with anxiety. So doing it all over again, I would have proactively asked to be placed on that medication. So why was it used during my IVF protocol? It was discovered when we transferred to our second clinic that I had endometriosis and they elected to do a biopsy. 
And that biopsy was done at a specific time in my cycle. It was actually done with my own OBGYN and then mailed off to the company. And it was determined from there that I was positive for BCL6. So I'm going to share more about that here in a second too. And so Depolupron was the outcome of that biopsy test I had done. So let's talk about what BCL6 is. This is a gene biomarker and it's present when there's inflammation. Studies have demonstrated that BCL6 is overexpressed in women who have endometriosis. It's able to identify lining issues and resistance to progesterone. This in turn is thought to cause problems with implantation and pregnancy. Another study showed that women with elevated BCL6 results are five times less likely to succeed in IVF or subsequent transfer attempts. The specific test that my OB used was called the Receptiva. I will link that in today's show notes because their website is really educational for not only medical professionals, but also for patients. And it has studies listed and just a lot of really good information on this. But I don't want this to be confused with an ERA or an endometrial receptivity analysis. That is different. So that is specifically used to evaluate the expression of genes in an attempt to find the most optimal embryo transfer window where the receptiva test does not tell us anything about transfer timing. It specifically shows uterine inflammation that has been shown to be a major cause of unexplained infertility, failed IVF, reoccurrent pregnancy loss, and even those cases where embryos were genetically normal, which we did have that testing done. Studies are still being completed to show what success rates are after utilizing this test, but so far, it is demonstrated that an increase of failed IVF patients went from a 10% success rate untreated to over 50% live birth rate after treatment, some were even as high as 70%. So let's tie this back to Depolupron. BCL6 positive patients treated with Depolupron showed the highest pregnancy rates at approximately 81%. Depolupron treatment protocols typically are around 60 to 90 days. It's a once monthly injection. Mine was one shot per month for two months before my transfer. We did a frozen embryo transfer. A recent published paper in the Journal of Assisted Reproduction and Genetics outlined similar success of either a laparoscopy or Depolupron for 60 days compared to untreated positive BCL6 women. So in this seven-year study, live birth rates went from around 10% untreated to over 50%. I think that this is worth you taking to your doctor and advocating for if you feel you fall into one of these patient categories. I want to encourage you to have that conversation with your reproductive doctor and see if it is best for you. Like I said, I linked the website in today's show notes. There's studies located on there. Always follow your gut feeling or your intuition and advocate for your reproductive health care. Remember, my inbox is always open. So if you would like to talk more about this, head over to Instagram, Tara B Fertility, and let's chat more. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please head over and hit subscribe or leave a review for Hopeful Hints and Infertility Podcasts. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you back here next week, Tuesday.